I am Anil Kumar sharing with you a question from my subscriber and I hope its solution will help many others. It is based on continuous probability distribution. The question is, consider the function f of x as a probability density function, so I am writing pdf in short, for the continuous random variable x. f of x is equal to x over 4 when x is between 0 and 2, both included, and is equals to 4 minus x over 4 when x is between 2 and 4. You need to show that f of x is a valid probability distribution function. Find probability for different conditions. Now, since this question has been put up in one of my videos where I've used integration to solve, I'm going to solve this question without integration. Maybe that was the reason why the concept was not very clear. So uh, let's talk about probability distribution function for time being. It really defines probability, the probability distribution function defines continuous probability distribution for any given random variable, right? So we are talking about continuous probability distribution. And the probability that a random variable assumes is a value between a and b, which is given by the area under the curve, right? So what we are going to make here is a sketch which will provide us with the variation of function with the variable which we have here as x. So the function is valid from 0 to 2. Right? So let's take some values here and calculate. So we have, let's say, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Elsewhere, it is 0. So if the value is 0, then x over 4 is the equation. So 0 will give us 0. So we get this point. So if the value is 1, we get 1 fourth. So let's say this is 1 fourth. This is half. And then this will be 3 fourths, and that is going to be 1. Is it okay? Right. So let's plot these points and sketch the function. So if I substitute 0, I get 0. If I substitute 1, I get 1 fourth. So that becomes the point. If I substitute 2, then I get 2 over 4, which is half. So 2 will give me a value somewhere here. Right. Now, if the value is more than 2, then we look into this part of the function, which is 4 minus x divided by 4, right? So if I substitute 3 here, 4 minus 3 is 1, we get 1 fourth, so it is in the same line, 1 fourth. And if I substitute 4, 4 minus 4 is 0, so you get it there. So what you see here is that the probability distribution function could be sketched like a triangle with a hub right in the center, right? So that is how you can see it. So this value, which is the maximum value, will be at 2, and the value will be half. Okay. Now let's look into the question in more detail. So that's the probability distribution function f of x and that's the continuous variable x. So first part is show that f of x is a valid probability distribution function. So it is valid if the area under the curve is 1. So for a we say valid if area under curve is 1. Since the probability of everything included should be 1, right? That is the reason. So you can find the area under the curve, since it is a triangle, it is half base of 4, this is 4 units, right? From 0 to 4. So you should know that probability elsewhere is 0. I should have written here, elsewhere I should have 0 for, for other values. of x. Is it okay? So that, I missed that part. So elsewhere it is 
it is 4 okay right 0 now so the area under this curve is half base so base is 4 for us right so we'll multiply by 4 times height which is half and that is 4 over 4 which is 1 unit since the area under the curve is 1 it is a valid probability distribution function right so that is clear now let's do part B now part B is we are looking for probability when it is less than equal to 1 now when I say less than equal to 1 that means we are now looking for area within this portion that is the area we are looking for right since this position is 1 so probability within an interval is now beyond this point it is 0 so we are just looking for the shaded area so we'll find area under this curve right? so so the area here is equal to half of base so we're using triangle area so let me write down the formula area of triangle equals to half base times height so we'll use this formula to find the area not integration so area is half base is one unit right so we'll multiply by one and the height is one fourth correct so times one fourth so that gives you a value of one over eight so the probability for b is one over eight for C, you can see it is greater than or equal to 3. That means we are talking about this portion. Right? This is 3 for us. Greater than or equal to 3 really means we are looking into this portion area. Elsewhere it is 0, right? So it is area of this triangle plus 0. So it is just this triangle. So in this case, probability for x greater than or equal to 3 is also same as we calculated from the symmetry you can say or just calculate this as 1 times half times half I mean sorry 1 over 4 which gives you 1 over 8 so both of them first B and C are same right now let's talk about probability when X is between 1 and 3 so when I say between 1 and 3 that means that means this portion right so we're looking into 1 and 3 so between this portion now you can find this probability by taking away the probability of other two that is one way so this probability is uh, less so d now so probability when x is between 1 and 3 is equal to uh, total probability of 1 minus the probability when x is less than or equal to 1 and take away probability when x is greater than or equal to 3. So you could do like this, right? So it is 1 minus 1 over 8 minus 1 over 8, correct? So, and then you can get this probability, right? So if you multiply by 8, you get 8 minus 2, which is 6 over 8. And that simplifies when you divide by 2 as... 3 over 4 is okay so that becomes the probability of the second one so we'll write this as 3 over 4 the last one here is when the probability is less than this that means we're talking about this portion and we are talking about the portion after this is it okay so those means you have to add these two so that probability is 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8, which is 2 over 8 or 1 over 4. Is it clear? So like this, you can actually solve such questions. So I hope that is absolutely clear. So I haven't used any integration. That could be a problem for some students. Uh, and that is not really required for solving such questions. We are only looking forward for calculating area under the curve. So if we have straight lines, you can form rectangles and triangles. It is easy to do. Only when we have a curved surface that we may need to do integration. 
So I hope this point is absolutely clear. Feel free to write your comments and share your views. And if you like and subscribe my videos, that'll be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.